You are just a walking man right now that is bound for federal prison. Mark my words. An armed robber points a gun at workers inside this credit union. Why you need to know what he looks like. A man is killed when he gets too close to the roller dam. How experts say it happened. This morning I woke up and I was gonna go to the hospital and see him. And my neighbor told me that, that he was gone. <laughs> Tragic news for friends of an 18-year-old killed in an early morning crash. But first, there's breaking news out of Cedar Rapids tonight. A robbery on the southwest side tonight. CBS 2's Chris Jones has this report from the scene. Well, this all went down a little more than two hours ago, right behind me here on the other side of the street. What I've been told from the apartment manager and police is that there was someone on the side of the road apparently trying to sell a car jack when they were robbed at gunpoint. Uh, there were what appeared to be three people in that car, and police say someone did sustain an injury, but they did not go to the hospital. No word right now on the suspect other than that they had what appeared to be a handgun. We'll, of course, keep you posted as more developments become available. Reporting in Cedar Rapids, Chris Jones, CBS 2 News. In another robbery today, a man who pointed a gun at a clerk's head in a robbery is on the run. Some credit union workers had their day shattered by an armed man who forced them to the ground and demanded money with the gun held to their heads. This happened at the First Federal Credit Union on First Avenue Southwest in Cedar Rapids about 930 this morning. President of First Federal is fighting mad tonight. Now he's ready to help police however he can, including with a big reward. CBS 2's Lindsay Marone is live in Cedar Rapids right now with our other top story. Lindsay? Jack, the president of this credit union is livid. His workers weren't hurt physically, but he says the robber put a gun to their head, forced them to the ground, and threatened to kill them. Now, not too long ago, the Cedar Rapids Police Department released photos taken during the robbery, hoping that you at home can take a good look at them and help them solve this crime, because as of right now, this robber with a gun is still on the loose. I had people rob us before, but never in such a fashion as this. As squad cars fill this parking lot, the credit union's president is beyond angry. He is a dangerous criminal animal. Police say after grabbing the money, the robber took off running south down 5th Street. But before that, before even getting his hands on the dough, bank staff say he rammed a gun into their faces, traumatizing them. What does this do to an individual when they're looking point black at a gun and people are ordered to get on the ground? This would scare any of us here. With the robber on the run, police began to comb the area. They searched dumpsters. They found fresh footprints outside the old United Methodist Church. We went to walk through just to come into the building and say, OK, you can't walk there. And well, why? Well, we got a footprint here, so. And while it was a close call for credit union workers, it was also close for the children here on the second floor of the church attending summer camp. Luckily to this morning, they were not going on a field trip. Um, yesterday morning, actually, they did leave going to a field trip about this time, I think. The same time the robber came running through here with a gun. Let's capture thugs like this. We've got to come to it, and we'll put money behind our mouths. For this bank president, the prize tag is $100,000. It's his own reward for this crime to come to a conclusion, and he leaves the robber this message. That your mother will turn you in, if nothing else, because it's a matter of time, and you're going to be in prison. Mark my words. You can see on the sign on the door here that the bank closed down today. They will reopen tomorrow, and we're going to show you those photos once again. Police say the robber is white, about six feet tall, dressed in blue coveralls, glasses, and a camouflage bandana on his head. Police are asking anyone with information to call them or call Crime Stoppers immediately. We're live in Cedar Rapids. Lindsay Marone, CBS 2 News. Lindsay, thanks a lot. There's a lot of money involved here, so police say if you want that reward money, you can pick up the phone and give them a call. Tonight, we know the name of the man who drowned in the roller dam in the Cedar River last night. Police now say 30-year-old Christopher Clark of Cedar Rapids got trapped on the wrong side of that dam while he was jet skiing. Now, the roller dam is just off Old River Road on the southwest side of Cedar Rapids. 
With Clark last night on another jet ski was this woman. They say Bobby Jo McDaniel was drunk driving her jet ski. She's charged with operating a vessel while intoxicated. Rescue crews say even life preservers are pretty much useless when someone is fighting against the strong current created by this kind of dam. CBS 2's Jamie Oberg talked with firefighters today about what happens when someone is caught in that undercurrent. Christopher Clark was wearing a life jacket, but fire and rescue crews say they're basically useless against this undercurrent. Take a look at the blue barrel. As you can see, it just keeps circulating and slamming against a cement wall hidden behind the water. That's what happens to whatever gets in the path of roller dams and rescue crews say that's what happened to Clark. Now let's take a look at this. It shows the hidden dangers of roller dams and just what happens when something or someone gets caught in the undercurrent. The water just keeps barreling, creating air pockets, slamming whatever is trapped against a concrete slab over and over again. I touched this front end up against the roller dam coming up the river and uh, just sucked them under. As you can imagine, it was a horrific scene for these helpless onlookers. The guys over there are trying to throw them ropes and buckets and stuff, trying to pull them back in. And he just kind of kept disappearing, and then he'd come back up, and, and then eventually he just stayed down. Emergency crews say they didn't do any good because the current was just too strong. Cedar Rapids fire crews practice water and ice rescues about every two years. They average about eight rescues a year. It was at this very spot they lost two of their own back in 1976 during a training exercise. Jamie Oberg, CBS 2 News. Now, McDaniel said she tried to help Clark but turned back. She was taken to jail on that drunk driving charge and has since been released. Weather now, great day of sunshine, but some areas could get a little bit of rain before this day is over and done. Chief Meteorologist Mace Michaels is here with a look at your first morning weather. Cold front has been pushing into the area and the showers and thunder showers have been moving through the state, but it looks like now the front is off to our east into Illinois and on into uh, southern Wisconsin. So the moisture is sort of tracking away, although a couple of showers in southeast Minnesota are trying to clip areas close to Decorah. Looks like a few little showers there north of Olmai may sneak down, but the rain chances through the rest of the evening are pretty slim. The highs today battled to get into the 70s. A few spots there making it up into the low 70s. Cedar Rapids, Decorah. Prairie du Chien, Dubuque, making 73, 74 degrees. A little warmer towards Washington at 79. Now with the sky beginning to clear, temps are at 70 to 75 degrees. Other than that low shower chance in the north this evening, most areas staying dry and temps through the 60s, down in the low 50s tomorrow morning. Back up into the 70s though tomorrow afternoon, many spots making it to 80. We'll look at the next rain chance coming up and also more on the record cold here for this month in a few minutes. Mace, thank you. Waterloo police say they don't have their man yet, but someone else does. Officers were called to the area of Broadway and Congress streets last week on the 20th for a shooting. 33 year old Bernard Edwards was shot once in the abdomen. The suspect was identified as 23 year old Tavares Montgomery. Well, today, Waterloo officers say Montgomery is in Wisconsin being held there after a task force tracked him down. He's in the Dane County Jail until he can be sent back here to face charges. The family of a homeless man shot by a Johnson County deputy has been located, and they say they didn't even know he was homeless. John Dang was shot by a deputy who said Dang had a knife and was attacking another man. Iowa City Police say two family members identified him and told officers they didn't even know he was homeless. The deputy, Terry Stotler, is on administrative leave while this incident is being investigated. Sergeant Troy Kelsey says the three men involved were no more than 15 feet from each other when the stabbing happened. The investigation could take a couple of months. He was killed just a day after his 18th birthday. Jaron Janey died today after an early morning single car accident in Benton County. Still in the hospital are the driver, 19-year-old Brandon Hundley of Vinton, and another passenger, 18-year-old Shelby Usher of Vinton. A fourth person in the truck was not hurt. This crash happened just after one this morning on 33rd Avenue Drive, about three and a half miles west of Center Point. Investigators say Hundley lost control of his 2000. 2006 Ford Ranger sliding into a ditch and then hitting a tree. CBS 2's Robert Price has the latest. <laughs> it was an emotional scene as friends of Jaron Janey paid their respects at the crash site. It doesn't it, seem it does real. Not seem real at all. 
Not at all, and it probably won't. The ditch is still covered with debris, pieces of truck everywhere. <laughs> it's all especially tough for Jaren's girlfriend, Lindsay. She's just found Jaren's cell phone. Meanwhile, some friends leave flowers, others write notes. A lot of hugs and tears, all for their dear friend, Jaren. He's just a good boy. This morning I woke up and I was going to go to the hospital and see him. And my neighbor told me that, that he was gone. And he was too, way too young. And he had just turned 18. 19 year old Justin Brown was one of Jaren's best friends. He was also the fourth person involved in this crash. We were both in the back seat of the truck that the seats look at you, and I'm here, and he's not. Justin says he and Jaren were being dropped off at Jaren's house west of Center Point just after 1 in the morning. But the driver, 19 year old Brandon Hundley, lost control on the gravel road while taking a curve. We went through the first one and started sliding and then went in the ditch and before we got a full barrel roll in, the tree stopped us and like broke the truck in half where the cab is. Save for a few scratches, Justin wasn't hurt, so he turned his attention to Jaren, pulling him out of the truck. He just kept on saying, help me, Brown, help me. And <laughs> I just started running to find the first house and it was his house and that's when I realized where we were. For friends of Jaren Janey, returning to the scene of the accident is a reminder of just how close Jaren was to being home. His house right around the corner, less than a football field away. Now that Jaren's gone, friends choose to remember the good times. How he was a fun loving, friendly guy, always the life of the party. He was just a good kid. I think everyone should miss him. I mean, I think that he pretty much just wanted everyone to be happy and try to help each other. In Benton County, Robert Price, CBS 2 News. The conditions of Brandon Hundley and passenger Shelby Usher are not be Usher rather are not being released tonight. In Cedar Rapids, a man is arrested for allegedly robbing his father at knife point. 32 year old Nicholas Perry is charged with first degree robbery. Sergeant Christy Hamlin with the Cedar Rapids police says Perry and his father got into a fight at the apartment they shared. That's when investigators say Nicholas used a steak knife to demand money from his father, then left. He was arrested at a motel by Marion police a short time later. If you need steam, now is the time to act. The deadline for applying to the steam energy assistance program is tomorrow. The program helps low and high pressure steam users with the cost of converting to other power sources and with high steam bills. $21 million has been given to the program and 16 million of that will go toward conversion costs and other 5 million toward post flood steam bill assistance. To apply, you need to fill out an application online at corridorrecovery.org. If you don't get your application in by the end of tomorrow, you will not get another chance to apply. If you see news, let us know 800-222-KGAN or email us with breaking news tips, pictures and videos from the scene to news at KGAN.com. Sure, it's almost August, but if you haven't picked out your college yet, the Princeton Review says several local choices are good ones. Most every college in eastern Iowa makes the list of best Midwestern colleges. You can see the list here, but that's not the only rankings our schools are getting either. Iowa State ranks number 18 for professors get low marks. University of Iowa ranks number 12 for party schools. Number 17 for lots of hard liquor and number 10 when it comes to the frat and sorority scene. There's now a traveling version of one of America's most popular memorials and it's making a stop in eastern Iowa this week. Photojournalist Steve Worthington shows us why the Vietnam Moving Wall Memorial continues to draw crowds. It's cheerful. It's you know, it brings back a lot of memories. There's tears here, there's sobbings, but I think each of us that comes, we're all going to touch or stand in front of this wall and maybe heal just a little bit. There you go. Oh, I got part of another one. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's neat. It is. That's neat. Oh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's nice to have this in memory of the Vietnam War veteran. 38E okay. row 18. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Yep, yep. I haven't seen him or touched his name since 1967. It's very humbling for me, being a, a veteran myself, uh, to come 
here and just to uh, meditate and spend a little quiet time. It gives you an opportunity to thank those who died for our cause. The wall will be at the Herbert Hoover National Historic Site through August 3rd. Get your motor running, where you can see the biggest racing weekend in the history of Iowa. And some showers trying to work back into the area from the north. I'll show you those and talk about the record cold July next. I watch CBS 2 and so should you. You're watching CBS 2 News at 6. Great. We're built. We're built. We're built. We're built for breaking news. Are you paying to? There's only one station. KGAN CBS 2. That does in depth investigations. There's only one station. KGAN CBS 2. With the guts to expose wrongdoing and government waste, there's only one station. KGAN CBS 2. That takes on the risks and goes inside the store. There's only one station. KGAN CBS 2. That stands up for you. CBS 2. CBS 2. KGAN CBS 2. Built for breaking news. News. Radar wise, watching some showers, not a lot of them, but a few over off into Illinois along 39 and 88. The interstates over there, some stronger cells as the cool front is moving away from us. Uh, there's been some showers also wrapping out of southeast Minnesota, uh, light and dissipating, but you may run into a sprinkle or two north of Cresco, Harmony area to just north of Decorah. We'll say our far northeastern counties here in the viewing region, uh, Winnesheek, Almakee County, Mitchell, Howard counties. You might see a sprinkle or a brief shower here in the next hour or so before this area of rain sort of comes to an end. As expected, most of the rainfall totals were pretty light and most numerous here in the northeastern corner of uh, the state, as you see from around Prairie du Chien, also stretching back uh, in through the Waterloo area. These sections pretty much had to deal with that tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain. In the areas of green here, maybe a half an inch, but the lighter blues totals again a tenth to a quarter of an inch. And south from Waterloo down to Cedar Rapids, almost nothing. Satellite radar across the state shows a lot of cloudiness from earlier on today, and then we finally started to see the clearing in work in from the west. Nice to see that clearing head into the area today as well. Just starting to see it plow in from uh, the Dakotas and Nebraska, and that's what will drift at us throughout the night tonight. Again, here's some of those showers wrapping out of southern Minnesota, trying to make it in here to the northeastern corner of the state. And again, low chance of a shower as you head to the northeast. Obviously another cool day. You can see how it has dried out though here for around Cedar Rapids. Temperatures falling back as well through the 70s now. Humidity low with that dew point down at 56 and the humidity 59%. So really starting to see that drier air nudge in with just a few little clouds left over in spots. Area temperatures about 70 to 75 degrees. Pretty nice evening so far. It looks like though we're on the way to another cold night tonight with temperatures dropping to near 50 degrees or so. And here are some of the numbers if you crunch them down so far here for the month, taking all the highs and all the lows, you end up with about 65 and a half degrees in Dubuque. Of course, we still have today and tomorrow's numbers to add in, but more than likely ending up setting a record there in Dubuque. Cedar Rapids, obviously a record dropping there. The old one, almost 70 degrees back in 04. The normal is 75, so well below average. And uh, some of the one of the area's longest uh, bit of records in the Marion area, 68.6, 70 degrees back in the summer of 92, a very cold summer. Now this is sort of an early stat in from the state climatology office, but if you take all of the highs and lows across the state and crunch those down, they only have about uh, two thirds of them in so far, so they have more to get in. But that hits about 68.2 right now. That would end up being the coldest in the state. Uh, 68.3, the old one back in 1891. The 30 year average, 73.8 degrees. Now, by the way, I checked Waterloo, also took a look at Des Moines. Those areas not setting uh, the coldest, but definitely hitting the top 10 of some of the coolest July so far. There's the clouds and showers to our north. Chilly air up here in the Dakotas and Minnesota and a few of those little showers trying to wrap down tonight. Another front to our north will move in and bring in a chance for some rain as we look into Saturday.
Quiet though for the night tonight with high pressure around. Only a few fair weather clouds for us to talk about into tomorrow. Here's the front rolling in for Saturday. There it is dropping by with the showers and even a few little thunder showers. But notice by Saturday afternoon it starts to head off to the east. Clearing and cool tonight. Lows low to mid 50s. Tomorrow mostly sunny and warmer. Highs about 75 to 80 degrees. Sunday, nice day. Saturday, and eh, maybe not so nice. Monday, yeah, we're in between with another front. This northwest flow keeps the fronts a coming. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow looks perfect. Mm. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Thank you, Mace. Thanks, Mace. Well, here's what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 mm -hmm. at 7. Don't miss another house guest being evicted from the compound on Big Brother 11. Then on CSI, crime scene investigation at 8. Ray and Riley are taken hostage in a Las Vegas neighborhood while investigating a shooting. And at 9 on The Mentalist, three National Guard veterans are murdered and Jane goes undercover to try and find the killer. Our pitcher. Next in sports, the guy that shut down Lansing Key at the state baseball tournament. But first, here's today's sports quiz. E.T.'s Michael Jackson investigation. I keep it on. Michael's lost phone calls singing to Elizabeth yeah. Taylor. Then Michael's personal chef and what you don't know about his little boy. No. Next, E.T. Tonight at 6.30 on CBS2. We love coming to AW to treat ourselves, but only on special occasions. Yeah, like days that end in Y. <laughs> Nothing refreshes like an icy cool AW limeade made with real fruit juice. Choose your favorite flavor now only a dollar at AW. My place. The sale you've been waiting for is finally here. Love it a mattress factory's summer clearance. Save 20, 30, 50% and more on quality Love It a mattresses. Handcrafted Love It a Queen set start as low as $319. Or get an incredible price on a very special Love It a mattress set, the Savannah Pillow Top, now only $399. Inner spring mattresses, memory foam beds, even futons, nearly everything is on sale. Don't miss the biggest sale of the year. Summer clearance at Love It a mattress factory. Iowa Speedway officials are already calling it the biggest weekend of racing in state history. The NASCAR Nationwide Series hits the Iowa Speedway for the first time ever this weekend with the U.S. Cellular 250. Drivers, including Series Points leader Kyle Busch, began arriving at the track today for some practice laps and media photo ops. Busch has five wins this season in the Nationwide Circuit. He and some other drivers hit the track today to prepare for Saturday's race. Because the Iowa Speedway is only seven-eighths of a mile, many drivers compare it to the short track in Richmond. But Bush, who's raced there, says Iowa's track is one of a kind. The track um, does not drive one lick like Richmond at all. Um, it's really a, a unique racetrack. You can run too wide here. We did in the Camping World race. Not, not so sure we shouldn't be able to this weekend also and have a good, uh, have a good show. So um, it's a fast it's a fast racetrack. Just a little further west on Interstate 80, teams in the Boys State Baseball Tournament are now one win away from the title game. Semifinal action at Principal Park begins today in Class 1A. Second seeded Lansing Key faces the third seed Lennox. And that mom is having way too much fun watching her kid over at Principal Park. We'll pick it up scoreless in the second, two down. John Heiderscheidt with the great grab, but he overthrows first. That allows Ben Borland and Austin Stuber to score. Lennox takes an early 2-0 lead. Still in the second, now 3-0. Connor Lang at the dish, and he crushes that one. It goes all the way out to the wall in center field. Ethan Westfall trots home to make it 4-0. In the meantime, Westfall on the mound is just dominant. The strikeout here ends the third. He K's 10 in the game, 24 in the tournament so far. The Tigers win 11 to three. They will face Newman Catholic in the title game. They beat Alta this afternoon, four to nothing. Lansing coach Gene Schultz is still proud of his Keyhawks. To get here has just been amazing. We've had a great, great season and we didn't play good baseball. And when you don't play good baseball on the state, state level, you're not gonna come away with too many you know, gifts or wins. So give credit to Lennox, they played very well. Tough pitcher. Tonight, the 2A teams hit the diamond. Solon faces St. Edmund. Dyersville Beckman takes on Cherokee after that. Some big news from Major League Baseball as the New York Times reports that Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz both tested positive for steroids in 2003. 
According to the report, those guys are on that list of 100 players who failed the drug test when the testing was supposed to be anonymous. The paper cites lawyers involved in litigation over the results as its source. Ortiz declined to comment on the story. Ramirez just finished a 50-game suspension for testing for a banned substance earlier this season. In football, co-college linebacker Tate Harrison is named a preseason All-American by D3Football.com. Harrison racked up 120 tackles last season, second most all-time at Co. He's just the third Cohawk to earn preseason All-American honors. Sports quiz time. Since we talked a little bit about the Red Sox, I figured I'd ask who hit the home run for the Yankees when they beat Boston back in the 03 ALCS. The answer, Aaron Boone. That's all for sports. We'll be back right after this. At Jungie Volvo Cars, we're offering the Volvo Safe and Sound Coverage Plan to make your life a little easier. It's safe because it's a Volvo. It's sound because it includes a complimentary five-year warranty, five years of factory scheduled maintenance, and five years of wear and tear coverage. Jungie Volvo Cars wants to give you the all-in-one, comprehensive, confidence-inspiring Safe and Sound package. Purchase a 2009 S80, the Volvo flagship, for only $31,999. Jungie Volvo Cars, we sell luxury for less. Visit us at JungieVolvo.com. C. Jane. My name's Patrick Jane. C. Jane work. <laughs> Smells of musky cologne and tobacco. So... He's upper management in the hotel or gaming business. Consultant. C. Jane fight. I would rethink this technique of yours. C. Jane solve. Jane, I'll never doubt you again. C. Jane move to Thursday night. Just follow procedure. Where's the fun in that? The Mentalist. It's fascinating the way your mind works. On its new night, CBS Tonight, under CSI. For outdoor projects, use AC2 Micro Pro Pressure Treated Lumber from Menards. AC2 is ideal for decks, docks, and fencing. It has a light natural color and an Osmos limited lifetime warranty. All on sale starting at $149 for a 6 foot 1x4. Create beautiful patios, walkways, and more with tumbled Belgian pavers. Available in four sizes and in three colors starting at $0.24 cents for a 3 inch by 6 inch Belgian paver. Save big money at CBS 2 News is brought to you by Menards. Here's what's coming up tonight on Fox News at 9. In these tough economic times, every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. Tonight on the Fox News at 9, you're going to have a chance to get a little bit here with Half Off Dining. And tonight, yummy, yummy, Godfather's Pizza. You can help support the local economy and a local business and do it all for half price. That's tonight on the Fox News at 9, your news one hour earlier. So you basically buy $50 worth of gift certificates to Godfather's Pizza tonight for 25. Mm, it's a deal you can't pass up. They'll go fast tonight. Yep, on the Fox News at 9. Uh-huh. Don't have any problem getting rid of the pizza certificates. No. no weather was popular. Easy sell today too. Yeah, it sure was. I uh, had a little cool shower mm. start to the day, but then the sunshine was able to bust out. Here's a look at the radar from earlier on today. There's that blotch of showers this morning. As quick as it moved out, the dry air is trying to sink in now, but as you look up into Canada, that white blob of clouds, that's the next little round of rain that'll head at us. So the night tonight, maybe a shower or two this evening far north. Then it clears out into tomorrow morning. Look at that clear sky. That'll bring us a 51 low mm -hmm. in July. Again. In July. Back to almost 80 though tomorrow. We get past it. You know, we're going to be spoiled. We are going to be spoiled next July when it's back into the 90s. Right. <laughs> right. Thanks, Faze. Have a good night. Good night.